Hey programmers, welcome back to day three of the Adamants of Code. So like always, spoilers ahead, so if you haven't given this problem a shot, maybe click on the link and then give it a go and come back to this video. And so let's start by interpreting uh, the file for today. So if you take a look at today's challenge file, it looks uh, pretty strange. These are literally the contents of the file. And so what's the framing for this problem? Well, the input here represents, uh, we'll say like a forest. And when we interpret uh, the forest, we really just have two types of symbols. And so what we should do is really break it down. So if we have a dot uh, in a space in our forest, that really means we have an open space. And then if we have a hashtag, that means that there's a tree at that position. And so with these two types of you know, terrain, uh, we have a problem where we basically need to travel through this forest. And what's really the most interesting part about this problem is what we're allowed to do is actually repeat uh, this forest horizontally as many times as we need. And that'll become obvious uh, why that is in a little bit. And so in other words, although my input file will literally just have you know, this content, logically, I should be able to just repeat this horizontally. And they you know, say straight up in the problem that you'll want to repeat your forest just in the horizontal direction. And so overall, we'll have like a logical forest that should look something like this. And so if that's my forest, what does it mean to travel uh, through the forest? Well, our goal is to start at the top of our forest and then get down to the bottom most row of our forest. And in particular, we start in the top left corner. And when it comes to traversing uh, through the forest, we don't really care where we end up on the bottom row. We just want to definitely hit uh, the bottom row. And uh, as we actually travel through this forest, we have a particular rule for navigation. So our rule for movement, or at least for my input, was to move right three times, as well as move down once. In other words, if I kind of trace through and highlight uh, where I would end up while I travel this path through the forest, it would look something like this, right? Move three to the right and down one, so I end up here, and this pattern follows all the way down. Notice that sometimes I'm hitting a tree, which is totally okay. So by the end of me hitting the bottom most row, if I look at all these symbols I touched, basically I hit a few trees along the way, and those are actually what we want to count. Uh, this problem has us return the number of trees that you run into in your path down uh, to the very bottom. So in this case, I hit seven trees, and so I should just return the number seven in the context of my output. I think the most interesting part of this problem is the fact that I don't give you the entire uh, logical forest that you might need to actually travel from the top to the bottom. They only give you a slice of it, and you can repeat that slice as many times as you want. And so if we take a nod to the maybe efficiency of our algorithm, uh, what we probably don't want to do in the long run is you know, try to copy over uh, our forest too many times, because that would take up a lot of space. In other words, if I had, you know, my original input file just has, you know, these contents, let's kind of boil down what the complexity might look like. So I'll say that there are n rows in my input file, and there are m different columns. That really just describes the dimensions of my input file. We know that in the grand scheme of things, I want to basically travel uh, down n rows, right? And I can, you know, extend as many columns as I need to meet this. If I take a look at the you know, goal of my time complexity, I think I should be able to solve this in just linear O of n time. And if I don't copy over uh, the forest too many times, I should just have a really efficient space complexity of m times n, which is basically just the space used up uh, by the original input. So technically, I don't think we even need any additional space besides the original input. And so what we should avoid doing is definitely duplicating the grid because uh, we would basically have to multiply like n times m by another factor, which could uh, get very, very large. And so instead, we're going to need to figure out a nice trick uh, to get like a horizontally infinite forest. And so let's take a look at that pattern in isolation. So let's say I just had a very, very simplified version of this scenario. Let's say I just had this very simple grid that I'm kind of traveling through, and the logic I want to establish is I'm moving rightward through this grid, very similar to how we should move through the forest, uh, but I want to establish a repeating pattern. In other words, once I hit the end of my grid in this case, I want to kind of end up at the beginning. That way it seems like the grid is infinite, and I don't want to have to actually create a possibly another new five different spaces. So what I'll do is I'll start in the leftmost position, 
So that means position zero, and I'll also describe that by like index zero in my actual, you know, program. So if I'm over here, I can move over to the right one step. So my position is one, my index is one. And you're probably wondering why I have, you know, different markers for the position uh, and the index. So when I list the position here, I'm trying to represent like the logical information in the context of the problem. And the index represents how I show that information programmatically. This will become evident in a little bit. So I'm going to keep moving to the right, which for now just means I increase my position by one every time. Things are interesting toward the end of my array, though. I know if I took one more step, my position would be five and my index would also be five. Right, having a position of five is okay. Maybe I want that logically uh, in my problem. However, I can't have an index of five right now because the last index of my array here is really four, right? If the length of my grid is five, it's you know largest valid index is four because I start counting grid indices or array indices at zero, right? And so a really neat trick to use here is if you always want to stay within the bounds of some structure like a string or an array, you can use modulo. In general, you can modulo uh, by the length of your array. So if right now my grid.length is five, if I modded my index by five, I get back zero, which sort of brings me back to the very beginning of the array, right? Over here. So I basically had the effect of wrapping all the way around. And now if I keep incrementing my position by one, right now position six, and my index is gonna be represented by doing the position mod five every time. So now I'm at index one of my array. And you can see that this pattern follows all the way through until once again, I need to wrap back around, right? I'm at 10 mod five, which brings me back to zero, basically wrapping me back around uh, in the array. Really neat behavior of modulo is, if you modulo by a number X, your result must be strictly less than x. Recall that modulo gives you the remainder of a division, right? So if I divide by some number x, the remainder must be less than x, right? Otherwise, it's not a remainder at all. So I think the elegant way to implement this one is definitely using some modulo action. I think with that, let's go ahead and code this one up. All right, so here's our input file. Notice how large it is. It's about 320 lines. And let's start by just reading uh, that file. So I'm using my same read lines function as always. So what I'll do is I'll just await read lines. And that should give us just an array of every line. Every line would just be a string, right? So I'll call that const lines. I think we'd be okay to operate directly uh, on those strings. So let's say we just print it out right now. So what do those lines look like? Let's give this a go. There we have uh, every single line. And so when it comes to our main algorithm, what we want to do is try to reach the very last line. So I'm just gonna use a loop to just iterate uh, over like the height of my forest, which would just be basically the length of the lines array. So we'll say for let i equals zero. Maybe I'll be more specific here. Maybe I'll say, this is my row index. So I set row index equal to zero and I want to loop while row index is less than lines.length. So once this for loop finishes, then I know that I've actually hit the very bottom of my forest. And of course, I'll just see row index uh, plus plus. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, now we have to work in the logic for actually uh, traveling to the right, right? I know that in general, for now, I'm gonna move three spaces to the right and then one space down. This already moves one space down. But to move to the right, I'm gonna need some separate variable. So I'll just call it, let's call index. And they tell us in the problem that we should begin at the top left corner. So we'll consider that coordinates zero, zero. And what I'll be sure to do is use that modulo trick to make sure that I can wrap around horizontally in my forest, right? Basically I'm making it as if I'm repeating the forest an infinite number of times in the horizontal direction. So if I consider my current position, I can say, um, I'll say lines at row index. So that'll give me like the correct row. Then I need to seek to the correct column by just accessing my column index. However, uh, I know over time, I'm just gonna be incrementing my column index by looks like three. So I'll do call index plus equals three because that's just really uh, baked into the problem. Uh, but then I need to make sure that I have the effect of wrapping around, right? So I need to modulo by some quantity here. And so the quantity would really just be uh, the length of any individual line, right? It looks like 
every single row has the same length. So I'm just gonna reference maybe the first row. So I'll say line set index zero dot length. That will be my, let's say width. And so when I use my column index, I wanna modulo by that width, just like we spoke about in our sketch. So this would access just a single position or single character of our string. I just wanna verify what that character is. So I'll just check, you know, if this character is equal to a tree, which in our problem really refers to the hashtag. So if I have a hashtag, then I wanna count it, right? So I should have some external count variable. That will be our final result, right? So I'll say maybe over here, I'll say let tree count, or maybe I'll say num trees. Num trees starts at zero. Every time I find a tree, I just increment num trees by exactly one. Cool. Now that my for loop is done running, I should just return num trees. Awesome. So let's give this a go. I should get a 167 if this code is working properly. Nice, and there we have part one. Nothing much to this problem. Really clever usage of the modulo though. Like we said on the drawing board, if we uh, consider n as the number of lines in our input file, then the complexity really just comes from this for loop and really just giving us an O of n runtime. Let's head back to the drawing board to talk about what we should do for part two. All right, let's do a quick aside for part two. This shouldn't be too long. And so in part two, uh, we have really just an additional level of complexity kind of around this problem. Originally, I told us that we had to have a navigation rule where we always move three spaces to the right and one space downward. So overall, we're gonna have uh, many different navigation rules that we can use to travel through the forest. One thing to note here, uh, we can't actually mix and match these rules, and that makes the problem a little easier. In other words, uh, from the very beginning of your navigation, you have to stick to using just one of these rules. And so overall, if I actually count the number of trees that I would hit using these different rules, you would get some various numbers like this. And from these resulting numbers, all you want to do is just multiply them together, and that would give you your final answer. And this is the answer you should return uh, in the challenge. So not much to this problem, it seems. I just need to maybe refactor my code a little bit, uh, give it a way where I can easily you know, pass in different arguments for the navigation rules. And then from there, I should just be able to call this function uh, many times and then aggregate the results in a running product. So with that, I think we just have to do a little quick uh, refactor. Let's hop to it. All right, so part two should be a pretty small refactor. I'm just gonna start by pasting in the code we made for part one. And we're gonna need to probably abstract a lot of this logic into its own function. Because right now I have it hard coded to always move, let's see, one row downward and then three columns to the right. So instead I'll create some function, we'll call it numtrees. And what I should pass in to this function are a few different arguments. Let's give it the actual rows as well as uh, the way that we should travel through. So I'll call that my right move and then also my down move. Cool, so these will be numbers. And so let's take all of this original code. I think I could take all of it. Yeah, and we'll just replace those hard-coded values with these uh, parameters now. So I'll start by fixing this bit. So this should be rows. Now, so I can still take rows zero length to be the width. Uh, and then I wanna fix all of these increment values. So when I go downward, now I wanna move by exactly how much they tell me. So I'll say down move here. And then when I move to the right, that happens over here, that'll be my right move. Nice, I still wanna return uh, num trees though. So that's looking pretty good. How would I actually call uh, this function? Well. I would just do it like this, right? So I have, oops, all of my lines. And I'll call solve, or rather I'll call num trees, pass in those lines as the rows, pass in my right move. For the last example, it would have been something like three to the right, and then one down. And this should just give us back uh, the numbers. So let's just verify that this gives us the correct output, right? So I'll run part two, cool, still 167. Now I'll just go ahead and make my calls for all of the actual moves that I need to actually operate on. So maybe I'll create an array of them. So I'll call these my, I don't know, moves. 
and every pair will represent the right move and the down move. So one of them would be three and a one, something like this. And I'll just fill all of these in. So now that I have all of the rules for navigating uh, through the forest, I want to actually use these and call my function many times. So I'll just say for let, we'll say, I don't know, navigation of the moves array. I'll destructure this, so I'll grab both pieces. So I'll call that how I should move to the right and also downward. Then I'll be sure to call my function passing in those arguments instead, so right and down. And like we said in the drawing board, we want to do is multiply together um, all of the number of trees that we'd hit. So I'll do let num trees. So I'm going to multiply uh, things together. I think the move here would be to assign this one to one. And then I can just multiply into this variable. So I can say uh, num trees. And I don't want to name this the same as a function. That would totally break things. So I'll just call this, let's say, tree count. And I want to do a times equals here, right? Cool. So with that, I think let's uh, let's run this code. So I'll just return the tree count. Nice. Let's give this a go. I should get this large number starts with 736. Looks like we got a massive error saying navigation is not iteratable, which it should be uh, just a little, man, just a little typo. So missing a comma over here. So let's try that again. Nice. And there's our, our final answer. And so there we have it. Part two was just a really small spin off, basically requiring us to make a little helper function to be able to figure out uh, the number of trees for any arbitrary move set, right? All right. I think that wraps up day three of the advent of code and I'll catch you tomorrow.